A two-level full factorial design with four factors requires 16 experiments, and this doesn't even include replications. On the other hand, a fractional design with the same number of factors requires only eight experiments. You do lose some information when performing fractional designs, but not often do we need this additional information. Let's get started with this example about planning and analyzing a half fractional design in Python. Before we start, let's have a quick look at the example we're dealing with today. It's from a chemical product that was produced and now needs to be filtrated to complete the process. The aim is to increase the filtration rate from currently 75 gallons per hour by changing the parameters temperature, pressure, concentration of formaldehyde and the steering rate. Formaldehyde concentration is currently at the high level but should be reduced. That was previously not possible because the reduction in the concentration of formaldehyde would always compromise the filtration rate. This is what a full factorial design would look like. For a half fractional design, we remove half of our experiments, not randomly, but in a way that we could project our half fractional design with n factors into a full factorial design with n minus one factors. A very important concept of fractional design is aliasing. A full factorial design with the four factors temperature, pressure, concentration of formaldehyde and steering rate would result in 16 individual runs. And it would provide information about the four main effects of our design, six two-way interactions, four three-way interactions and even one four-way interaction. However, if you watched my full factorial video, you might have noticed that out of these four main effects and 11 interactions, only three main effects and only two interactions were actually significant. And the information that we gained about the remaining 10 interactions had no practical relevance. When we perform a fractional design, then we assume that our experiment is driven by only a few factors and that especially higher order interaction terms are not relevant in practice. And therefore it's okay to perform aliasing. Aliasing means that we combine certain effects and interactions. For example, instead of estimating the individual effect of the two-way interaction between the temperature and steering rate, we estimate the combined effect of the temperature and steering rate interaction plus pressure and concentration of formaldehyde interaction. And we assume that one of them will be insignificant. Let us look at the full example now to get a better understanding. The PyDOE package in Python has the feature to create fractional designs. The function to create the design takes a so-called generator as input and the generator defines the basic relation of our factors or in other words how are main effects and interactions paired or aliased. I did not find that very straightforward which is why I created this function here. If you give it the factors of your design as input it will create you the design matrix as well as provide you the alias structure for the main effects and two-way interactions. For our example, it would be a list of the four factors, temperature, pressure, concentration of formaldehyde and steering rate. And if we execute the code, we get the design matrix as well as the alias structure for the main effects and the two-way interactions. For the alias structure, we see that the main effects are here aliased with the three-way interactions. That means that when we interpret the main effects later, we actually interpret the main effect plus the effect of the three-way interaction between x, y, z. And this works because higher order interaction terms, the magnitude of higher order interaction terms is usually not as high. They have a smaller effect that is negligible compared to the main effect. It is a little bit trickier with the two-way interactions in this example because they are aliased with each other. But that's not necessarily a problem. Let's have a closer look. We're going to have a look at the main effect plots and the plots of the two-way interactions first. And I'm going to use the same functions that I already used in my full factorial design video. And now it's very important to remember the aliasing when we interpret the plots. It says main effect here in the bottom, but it actually is the combined effect of the main effect plus the three-way interaction. We see here that the pressure seems to have a 
negligible effect. Now either are both effects large, the main effect of pressure and the corresponding three-way interaction, but in opposite directions, but more likely are both parameters small and the pressure is actually an insignificant parameter. The remaining main effects seem to be significant. Again, it is actually the combination of main effects and three-way interactions, but it is reasonable to assume that the three-way interactions are rather small compared to the main effects. The two-way interaction plot looks a little bit funny, doesn't it? quite symmetric. Well, this is because of aliasing again. The temperature to RPM interaction and the pressure to concentration of formaldehyde interaction are aliased. Thus, they show the same magnitude and we don't know which one is causing this effect. However, we can make an educated guess. Since we know that the main effect of pressure is insignificant, it's also quite likely that all interaction terms where the pressure is involved are insignificant too. Thus, the only relevant interaction terms seem to be the temperature concentration of formaldehyde interactions as well as the temperature steering rate interaction. We can perform an ANOVA for confirmation. First, we need to define the model, which terms we would like to include. Then this OLS function does its magic. And last but not least, we're going to print the ANOVA table. Let's do that for only the main effect first. The two columns that we need here are the first one because it tells us which model term we are looking at and the last column because if this value is smaller than 0.05, we say it is a significant parameter. Here it would be the main effect of the temperature. Again, we need to remember that it is actually the main effect of the temperature plus the three-way interaction of the remaining parameters. And since the p-value is greater than 0.05, we would say this is an insignificant factor. However, in this table, all the main effects seem to be insignificant. Does that mean that no matter which value I change, it will not have an effect on the filtration rate? No, because we should also consider the two-way interactions in our model equation. Else the result might be misleading as in this example. Plotting the results earlier suggested that there are two significant interaction terms. Temperature and concentration of formaldehyde interaction and temperature and steering rate interaction. Now the result looks different because now all model terms but the pressure are significant and this is also what we expected from the plots earlier. So I think it's fair enough to remove the pressure from our model equation. This time all parameters are significant. We could, for example, add the concentration of formaldehyde steering rate interactions just to check, but the interaction plot did suggest that it is rather insignificant. But let's just confirm that real quick insignificant it is. Next on our to-do list for this fractional design example is to perform the model control step. Plotting the residuals versus predicted, residuals versus run and the QQ plot. In a nutshell, all these plots should show a random scatter rather than a trend and the QQ plot should follow the red line. But for our example, the model control looks good, I would say. Let us conclude our fractional design example by writing down our model equation. We get the estimates from the ANOVA summary table and if we compare this equation with the one we got from the full factorial design that required twice as much experiments, there is not that much difference. It's almost the same equation. Same when we look at the three-dimensional plots and the counter plots. They are also very similar to the plots that we obtained from performing the full factorial design. Now, not always is the result as straightforward as in this example. Because due to the fact that one factor, the pressure, was insignificant, we actually dealt with a full factorial design with the factors temperature, steering rate and concentration of formaldehyde. However, if the result at any time should be ambiguous, we did not waste our time with the fractional design because we can always run the missing fraction to get to a full factorial design and to de-alias. It's 
as easy as that. You just run the missing fraction as another block in your design matrix.